In this lecture, we will review sensation and perception. To consider how psychologists understand the senses and, more broadly, sensation and perception, we first need a basic work in vocabulary. In formal terms, sensation is the activation of the sense organs by a source of physical energy. Sensation is the process by which our sensory receptors and nervous system receive and represent stimulus energies from our environment. So, sensation is the information being received in via our senses. Now, perception is the sorting out, the interpretation, the analysis, and integration of stimuli carried out by the sense organs and brain. The process of organizing and interpreting sensory information and enabling us to recognize meaningful objects and events, that's perception. So, sensation is the information being received in via our senses, and perception is the interpretation of that information. So, what really is a stimulus? Well, a stimulus is any passing source of physical energy that produces a response in a sense organ. Stimuli vary in both type and intensity. Different types of stimuli activate different sense organs. For instance, we can differentiate light stimuli which activate the sense of sight and allow us to see the colors of a tree in autumn from sound stimuli, which through the sense of hearing permit us to hear the sounds of an orchestra. In addition, stimuli differ in intensity relating to how strong a stimulus needs to be before it can be detected. So again, sensation is the activation of the sense organs by any source of physical energy. In contrast, perception is the process by which we sort out, interpret, analyze, and integrate stimuli to which our senses are exposed. So, what is the relationship between a physical stimulus and the kinds of sensory responses that result from it? Well, psychophysics studies the relationship between the physical matter of stimuli and the sensory responses they evoke. The absolute threshold is the smallest amount of physical intensity at which a stimulus can be detected. Under ideal conditions, absolute thresholds are extraordinarily sensitive, but the presence of noise, which is like background stimuli that interfere with other stimuli, reduces detection capabilities. The difference threshold, or just noticeably difference, is the smallest change in the level of stimulation required to sense that a change has occurred. According to Weber's law, a just noticeable difference is a constant proportion of the intensity of an initial stimulus. Sensory adaptation occurs when we become accustomed to a constant stimulus and change our evaluation of it. Repeated exposure to a stimulus results in an apparent decline in sensitivity to it. One example of adaptation is the decrease in sensitivity that occurs after repeated exposure to a strong stimulus. If you were to hear a loud tone over and over again, eventually it would begin to sound softer. Similarly, although jumping into a coal lake may be temporarily unpleasant, eventually you probably will get used to the temperature. This apparent decline in sensitivity to sensory stimuli is due to the inability of the sensory nerve receptors to fire off messages to the brain indefinitely. 
So all our senses, seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, touching, eavesdrop on one another, and our brain blends their inputs to interpret the world. This is sensory interaction at work. One sense can influence the other. Consider how smell sticks its nose into the business of taste. Hold your nose, close your eyes, and have someone feed you various foods. A slice of apple may be indistinguishable from a chunk of raw tomato. A piece of steak may taste like cardboard without their smells. A cup of cold coffee may be hard to distinguish from a glass of red wine. A big part of taste is right under your nose. Thus, to savor a taste, we normally breathe the aroma through our nose, like smoke rising in a chimney. Food molecules rise into our nasal cavity. Smell can also change our perception of taste. A drink's strawberry color enhances our perception of its sweetness. Even touch can influence our taste. Depending on the texture, a potato chip tastes fresh or stale. Smell plus texture plus taste equals flavor. Yet, perhaps you have noticed, despite smell's contradiction, flavor feels located in the mouth, not the nose. Our senses do not function in isolation. They interact. We have seen that our perceptions have two main ingredients, our bottom-up sensations and our top-down cognitions, such as expectations, attitudes, thoughts, and memories. In everyday life, sensation and perception are two points of a continuum. It is not surprising then that the brain circuits processing our physical sensations sometimes interact with brain circuits responsible for cognition. And the result is embodied cognition. So once again, sensation is the information being received in via our senses. And perception is the interpretation of that information.